Hello and welcome. This is going to be our lecture video for February 16th through 17th. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've got two examples here of functions. Uh, let's find the inverse of each. Okay, so to find the inverse, uh, the very first step is to swap x and y. So we get x equals 5 to the power of y over 3 plus 4. Uh, and then we want to get this into a y equals form. Uh, so that'll uh, more likely match one of our answer choices. So how do we isolate that y? Well, let's get rid of this 4, uh, because it's an easy step to do. All right, and now that uh, the right-hand side of this equation is just an exponent uh, with our variable in the position of the power of that exponent, uh, we're going to use a logarithm to free that variable. So um, I just write the word log, base of the exponent becomes the base of the log, and then these two expressions switch sides. So the x minus 4 comes over here, and the y over 3 comes over here. All right, now I'll multiply 3 to both sides. And I get 3 log base 5 of x minus 4 equals y. Uh, and then, you know, if we wanted to do the fully um, condensed form of this, we could bring the 3 in as an exponent on the x minus 4. So just be prepared, prepared for that when picking out your answer choice. That 3 could also appear right about there. Okay, uh, let's do the one with the logarithm. So first step is swap x and y. x equals log base 2 of y minus 2 plus 3. We've technically found the inverse, but now we want to isolate that y. So we'll move over the 3. Alright, the variable we want to isolate is inside the argument of this logarithm, so that tells me we, we need to now rearrange into exponential form. That's where the swoop comes into play. Start at the base, go past the other side, come back to the argument. And that gives you your exponential equation. 2 to the power of x minus 3 equals y minus 2. And now we can just add that 2 over to both sides. Uh, 2 to the power of x minus 3 plus 2 equals y. Okay. And again, there's, you know, a... Uh, slight um, property here we could use to maybe match an answer choice. The 2x minus 3 could be expressed as 2 to the x over 2 to the third, which is the same as 2 to the x over 8, or maybe a 1 eighth 2 to the x. And we just sort of have to be fluent with these transformations so that um, if we get write this down, but this is our answer choice, we'll recognize that these are the, the same thing. Okay. Um, goal for today is to solve equations by using the properties of logarithms and to understand the meaning of the natural log. Why are we doing this? Uh, we use e as a base so frequently in exponential equations that log base e gets a special name. You know, one of the places we see it the most is that continuously compounding interest formula. Uh, that is uh, an exponent with e as the base. Um, and if we're ever trying to solve that, we got to use log base e. All right. So in our notes, write down that uh, the natural log is a logarithm with base e. The Latin name is uh, logarithmus naturali, giving the abbreviation ln. And on the calculator, it's a capital ln, but when we write our math, we almost always do a lowercase ln. All right, uh, here's a question uh, we were doing the other day in class, which was finding the domain of a logarithmic uh, equation. Uh, and when we're thinking about domain, we think in terms of domain restrictions. What are values we can't plug in? So let's write that down. What are values we can't plug in? 
Well, that all hinges on this logarithm, this right here. The rule with the logarithm is, well, maybe I'll actually I'll draw an arrow to the word log and I'll say, uh, we can't take the log of zero or a negative. All right, try it in your calculator right now. If you try to take you know, log base anything of zero, you'll get a, a non real answer error. Um, same thing if you try to take the log of a negative. All right, so this piece over here, the argument, this must be uh, greater than zero. So what I can do is I can take out the logarithm, the three X minus one, or I can take out the argument of the logarithm and say that it's greater than zero. Not greater than or equal to, because again, we can't take the log of zero either. Uh, and this is you know, an, an inequality that expresses our domain. But again, it, it won't be left like this. If we want to match an answer choice, we're going to have to rearrange it a little bit. So we get three X is greater than one divided by three divided by three, x is greater than one third. And that is a better expression for the domain of this function. We can only plug in values greater than a third and still get an answer. That also tells us that the graph of this will have its vertical asymptote at a value of one third. So very close to the y-axis, we'll say this is x equals one third, uh, and our graph will you know, curve in like this. It's also going to be vertically shifted by 40. So, you know, it'll, uh, the point uh, 0 comma 1 will have been moved um, right one third and up uh, 40. But, you know, we can just sort of imagine that as this curve going pretty high before um, curving off to the right. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit more about asymptotes. Um, so in general, an asymptote is when a curved line gets closer and closer to a straight line. Uh, we've seen it in a couple different graphs now. Um, exponential growth, exponential decay, those both have horizontal asymptotes. Uh, and a horizontal asymptote is specifically the y value that our function converges to as the x value goes to either infinity or negative infinity. And a vertical asymptote, we've seen those now with our logarithmic graphs, that's an x value at which our function shoots up or down to infinity. So horizontal is a y value, vertical is an x value. Um, take some notes on that, please. Let's practice another skill. Um, Test is in a week, so uh, we just sort of need to be reviewing everything. All right, uh, right with a single logarithm, condense. Uh, log base 4 of 32 minus log base 4 of 2. So when I'm subtracting two logarithms with the same base, I can divide their arguments. So this here becomes log base 4 of 32 over 2. Subtraction becomes division. Um, but 32 over 2, that can be simplified a little bit more. That can become log base 4 of 16. Uh, and now you might say, well, log base 4 of 16, well, that's got uh, an integer value because 4 to what power equals 16? 4 to the second power equals 16. So this all simplifies down to just a 2. All right. Uh, now we've got another one with uh, coefficients. These coefficients are going to become exponents. So first step, we'll rewrite this as log base 2 of x to the 6th plus log base 2 of y to the 5th. And then that addition becomes multiplication. So this here becomes a single log base 2 of x to the 6th, y to the 5th. You can always put parentheses around your argument. 
Um, sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I don't do it until there's multiple operations within the argument, but we could have done parentheses here and here if we wanted to. Okay, now we're, let's go the other direction. Let's expand the following. So we have log of 4x over y. This is assumed to be log base 10. Assume base 10. It's not going to matter because we're not going to rewrite that 10 ever, but if we ever you know, needed to plug in values and evaluate this, we need to know that. So division now becomes subtraction. This will become log base 10 of 4x minus log base 10 of y. And then here we have multiplication between the log base 10 of uh, or between the 4 and the x, so we can split this up into log of 4 plus log of x minus log of y. And that's uh, fully expanded there. Log base 10 of 4 does not have a nice easy value, so we'll just leave it like that. But if it was like log of 100, then we'd want to actually evaluate that because that does have a nice uh, integer value. Okay, uh, log, same uh, setup here, so let's go straight into it. Uh, the division is the most outside operation right now, so I'm gonna split this into log base nine of x to the fourth minus log base nine of 729. All right, then this four can come out in front. When we are expanding, we want the um, absolutely no operations left inside the argument. So this becomes 4 log base 9 of x and then log base 9 of 729. We can try plugging that into our calculator. Or if you just know what 9 to the third is, you'll see that this is equal to just a 3 because 9 to the third is 729. Um, all right. Since we're reviewing, maybe let's review how to actually plug that into our calculator. So you can, how I would do it is log 729 divided by log of nine, and just do the change of base formula. You see I get three, um, you know, it's log of the argument divided by log of the base. And then you don't have to go into this menu and scroll and try to find log base. I feel like this one's, Easier to forget where that is, and then yeah, you can panic and waste a bunch of time. But we get the same thing either way. All right, so now we're gonna be condensing logarithms as a step in solving. So here we've got an equation. Let's see if we can solve for that variable x. So um, as it is right now, we've got these two x's. We definitely want to put those together so we uh, have a chance of isolating a single x. Uh, these are both log base 10, so we can put these together by using that uh, property of logarithms. Um, I think it's, it might be called the sum property of logarithms or the product property, kind of depending on which direction you're going. But we're going to multiply these. The x minus three times the x is gonna go inside a single argument equals one. Um, I can distribute this x now, make this log of x squared minus three x equals one. And now our variable is inside the argument. So we're gonna use the swoop to free it from the logarithm the base here was hidden, but it must be a 10. So 10 to the first equals x squared minus 3x. And now I realize I have a quadratic. So I want to uh, get a 0 on one side, so I can use the 0 product property. So I'll subtract 10 from both sides. 10 to the first is just 10. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. And then I ask myself, are there two numbers that multiply to be negative 10, but add to be negative 3. Now right, let's see. Multiply to be negative 10, add to negative 3. I think I can think of those as negative 5 
and positive 2. And now by factor theorem, we get x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. Or by the ZPP. Both get you there. Okay, but now we want to look back at our original equation and make sure that neither of these answers cause us to take the logarithm of 0 or negative, because remember that's outside the domain of these functions. So let's see, if I plug in a 5, 5 minus 3, that's fine, that's a 2. Log of 5, that's fine. So if I plug in a negative 2, log of negative 2 minus 3 would be taking log of negative 5. So this negative 2 here is not going to actually work. We're going to eliminate this answer as extraneous. And we should probably plug 5 in and actually make sure this balances, but I'm pretty sure it does. All right, let's practice again. Copy this one down. Maybe pause the video, try this one on your own. All right, so I've got subtraction, so I'm going to divide these. So it's going to be log of 6 over 3x equals negative 2. Do the swoop at this point. 10 to the negative 2 equals 6 to the 3, or 6 over 3x. Uh, 10 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 10 squared, or 1 over 100. 10 squared is 100. Over 6 to the 3x, or 6 over 3x. All right, uh, we could cross multiply this if we wanted to. And we would get 3x equals 600. Divide both sides by 3. And we get x equals 200. Double check that that's within our domain. Looks like it is. So we're done there. All right, another one. Uh, 2 log x plus log 4 equals 2. All right, so... First thing I'll do is I'll take that coefficient and turn it into an exponent. Again, if you want to pause the video and try this one on your own, you can. So log of x squared plus log of 4 equals 2. Now with the addition and these both being log base 10s, I can uh, multiply the arguments. Log base 10 of 4x squared equals 2. All right, we'll do the swoop. 10 squared equals 4x squared. 10 squared is 100. 100 equals 4x squared. It's a quadratic, but there's no linear term, so we can just solve by taking square roots. Be 25 equals x squared. Uh, square root, square root. We get plus or minus 5 equals x but I think only the positive 5 will work because right here we don't want to be taking the log of a negative, so only x equals 5. And the negative was extraneous, so that one works. And we'll cross out that negative as extraneous. Um, and we should plug it back in, make sure it works. I'll do that for this one. 2 log 5 plus log 4. Let's see if we get 2. And we do. Okay. Um, I'll bet a few more questions here. That's that for this lecture video. And have a good rest of your day.